Moana Mackey. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It is a real concern if that is an example of the kind of thinking that's sitting around the Cabinet table in government in New Zealand. A minister who just stood up and said that, that ordinary voters aren't going to support having to pay more for an ETS. This is a minister who sat in a Cabinet that pushed tens of billions of dollars of cost away from the polluters of greenhouse gases onto ordinary Kiwi families who are already struggling. He is a member who made the ordinary voters of New Zealand pay more so that the polluters pay less. So I say to Mr Coleman, he might want to take that comment back. He also talked about debt. Well, thank God we had a Labor government that paid down government debt instead of giving the tax cuts that the National Party screamed for for nine years. We are not in the same position as Portugal, Ireland and Greece. You know why? Because they have government debt of between 80% and 144% of GDP. What does New Zealand have? 25%. Most of our debt sits in the private sector. Not 90% of it is in the private sector, not in the government sector. So to say that we are in the same category as those countries with incredibly high government debt is misleading. As Selwyn Pallett said, it's mischievous at best and dishonest at worst. But if that's what our government actually thinks, then we have no hope because they are going to be trying to fix problems that don't exist, the wrong problems. And as we know, it's all a smokescreen to do what they want to do all the time, which is to slash government services and to make ordinary Kiwi families pay more and get less from their government. Mr Speaker, the Prime Minister's speech had no vision, it had no plan, and more and more I start to think that being Prime Minister is just another thing that he wants to tick off his bucket list. There was only a cursory mention of housing in this budget, Mr. Speaker, and I think that this is in this um, speech, Mr. Speaker, and I think that this is very unfortunate because housing could have played a very important role in this government's response to uh, the recession. So I want to talk a little bit about the state of the nation in housing two and a quarter years on from the election of this national-led government. Well, the Minister, Phil Heatley, commissioned a report last year. He received it in February. He released it a few months later, which told him that New Zealand currently is short 70,000 dwellings. That's currently. That was in April 2010 that that report was released. Uh, the Department of Building and Housing, um, and this was a report that was released in September October last year, also pointed out that we will have a shortfall of another 15,000 houses in the next five years and another 10,000 in the decade following that. Well, the Minister Phil Heatley urgently responded, urgently responded to this depart Department of Building and Housing report that came out in the middle of last year, in January this year. And um, in it, he said that his response would be that he would send a pretty strong message to local government that they needed to... Um, have more dense housing developments. Well, that's true, but that certainly isn't nearly enough to address the incredible housing shortage. We have an estimated 20,000 New Zealanders, Mr Speaker, who are already homeless or in inadequate housing. We have enormous pressures in state housing, still there from the 1990s when the national government then hocked off nearly 13,000 state houses, mostly to their developer mates. They did carried out no modernisation whatsoever. In nine years of a Labor government, Mr Speaker, we had to try and repair that damage. We had to try and rebuild the housing stock. And I want to pay tribute to all the Labor housing ministers of that time who, despite a housing boom, uh, managed to add another 8,000 houses to the state housing stock in order to address that shortage and to carry out urgently needed maintenance work at the same time. We would have loved to have done more, Mr Speaker, had the money been available, um, but of course we were left with an economy in crisis after the last national government, uh, so we did exactly what we could. Um, Mr Speaker, in the state housing market, we, we have a Housing New Zealand waiting list that is nearing 11,000 families, and we know that there are more out there who would be on the waiting list if they felt they had a genuine chance of getting a state house, and a government that in last year's budget slashed the money there for the acquisition of state housing and maintenance of state housing by 80 per cent. And Housing New Zealand have been told that they have to build new houses um, out of 
savings within baseline because there is no more money for state housing in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, we're facing a crisis in the rental market. Rents are up by 25 per cent in some parts of Auckland, and that is in one year. 25 per cent jump in one year, and rents across the country are up 9.5 per cent. Auckland listings on Trade Me dropped 24 per cent uh, compared to the same time last year and had an 8 per cent increase in demand at the same time. And I want to thank my colleague Jacinda Ardern, who is going to win Auckland Central because she is on to this issue. She is working with me on the issues of housing in Auckland Central, while the current National Party member is in a government that is sitting on its hands and doing nothing about the rental crisis. Supply is also down in the Bay of Plenty by 22 per cent of rental properties I'm talking about, and in Northland by 14 per cent. Mr Speaker, when it comes to housing affordability, well, prices have only dropped about 5 per cent since their um, peak, which means that the first home is still out of reach, realistically, for most of those who want to get into home ownership. Mr Speaker, we had a survey that came out that showed that housing affordability in New Zealand, when you compared it to income, was on a par with New York. In Auckland and Tauranga, housing inaffordability is on a par with New York, and yet this government does nothing. We have a building sector, Mr Speaker, that's in crisis. Jenny and Holmes can't remember a quieter time. The number of dwelling consents issued in December was the lowest since records began in 1965. We are losing skilled workers overseas. And, Mr Speaker, what was the Minister's response to this? Uh, well, it was a pre-recession issue and it will be a post-recession issue. Well, the and it's a pre-recession issue, it will be a post-recession issue. In other words, I'm not going to do anything. He then said, oh, building activity will rebound. But, of course, as the President of the, Register, uh, of the Master Builders said, had the Chief Executive Warwick Quinn, he said, when the bounce comes, um, we, if we keep losing capacity as a result of the low building activity now, we won't be in a position to respond properly. We won't be in a position to respond properly because we won't have the skilled workers, and that is only going to exacerbate the housing shortage, Mr Speaker. So we've had a minister that's, that's tinkered around the edges. He's shifting assets around. He's not doing anything to actually add to the housing stock. And the tragedy... Mr Speaker, is that we had a real opportunity to make housing a key part of the recovery plan for New Zealand. And why would we have done this? Because we would have added houses to the housing stock and reduced the housing shortage. We would have kept people in work. We would have, we would have saved our residential building industry. We would be purchasing local products and local stores and keeping local businesses afloat. And we would have been stimulating our economy. That's what we could have been doing over the last two and a quarter years of a national government. And instead, all we've seen is a crisis worsen, the building industry crisis worsen, the rental uh, sector crisis worsen, and a government that is sitting on its hands on all these issues. So we've heard a lot of talk about Australia. And we were going to catch up with Australia at one point. They've stopped talking about that quite so much now. Mr Speaker. But let's have a look at a country that did include housing as part of its economic stimulus plan um, after the global financial crisis hit. Um, now, the, the federal government in Australia came out with a social housing initiative, Mr Speaker. Do you know how much money they put towards this initiative? 5.638 billion Australian dollars over three years for social housing in Australia. They plan to build 20,000 more social houses and upgrade 70,000 dwellings. They've actually exceeded that, I've been told, exceeded the number of dwellings that they've been able to upgrade. Uh, this was back um, in 2008-2009. And as of the 30th of November last year, of those 20,000 homes that were part of the Australian government's economic stimulus package, 18,000 of them are already underway and being built. And you don't need to accept this from me, Mr Speaker. Accept this from some of the builders in Australia, because if, if you look in, in Monash, Victoria, where affordable housing and social housing was part of the government's stimulus plan, Holden Peel Builders, which is a local building industry in Monash, said um, 
that this time last year they had no work booked for the year ahead. Now, thanks to this government's investment in housing, they have work locked in for the next 18 months. Their company director was asking himself, where is the work going to come from? He said, because of this project, instead of laying off blokes, we're putting on new apprentices. Now, he also said that all the guys that work for them are from the local area. He said that if you believe the press, for us it was going to be financial Armageddon. Now we're feeling good. We're employing people. We're not laying off workers. We're building houses. We're stimulating the economy. Maybe this is why Australia didn't go into recession despite what the Minister of Finance said yesterday.